Welcome to Spiritual and Empowerment Living with international speaker, spiritual mentor, and best-selling author, Tia Johnson, as she discusses spiritual and women's empowerment topics to assist you in igniting your spirituality and empowering your quality of life. Let's welcome your host, Tia Johnson. Hey there, spiritual trailblazer. Welcome back. Now, if you've made it to this part, part three of the three-part series, and you listen to the last two, kudos to you. Matter of fact, let me get a little round of applause. Hopefully that wasn't too loud. <laughs> so welcome to episode 227, Reclaim Your Life, a three-part series, Dare to Be. Dare to Be. All right, let's get it. <clears throat> so... Just a few things before we get started. I read you guys up and then I'm just like, so, <laughs> well, I think you know what's coming. I mentioned this towards the end of last week's episode. And I meant to mention it during the, during the beginning, and that is to schedule your goddess calls with me. Let's hop on a call. Let's see how we can get you to where you want to be in life. Meaning I know that everyone just needs a co-pilot in life, you know, someone who can help them. And and that's how I look at myself is someone who is there to help you strategize, to help you execute, you know, just to assist you in these, these life things. And the interesting part about it is it won't feel like work because it's going to be stuff that you can easily implement over time. So let's set up this goddess strategy call so I can help you to Unlock the goddess within and live that beautiful, authentic life that you have been just working on for so long and you just need someone to help you with that alley that extra oomph, okay? So the link to schedule that call is in the description for this episode. All right, 30 glorious minutes of you and me hashing it out. <laughs> All right, so a spiritual fact, I've been doing this for I guess like the last two episodes now three and this is just something I learned along the way so if this is your first time listening to the episode what I've been doing is making some time so a segment inside this uh, episode and other episodes to come where I just share something I learned it has nothing to do with the topic of the day but it's something that I wanted to share because I've read so many books over the years and have learned so much. There's so many things I want to share. So I figure why not just boop, insert it <laughs> in the episodes. And it's, it's really cool because a lot of things I've learned, it has to do with some of the common things that we say, use, or do and have no idea of its origins. So this is really cool. All right, so I went back to uh, Scott Cunningham's and David Harrington's book, The Magical Household Spells and Rituals for the Home. And if you are someone who's watching this, I post the videos on my IGTV. You can see what this book looks like. So you can go to my Instagram, which is Tia underscore Johnson underscore, and get to look at the book. And I decided to look at the chat that has to do with fur, fins, and feathers. And basically it's talking about animals. And how the animals help the household. So I'm just going to read a description. There's a couple of animals, but there's a bunch in here listed. So definitely check it out. And this starts on page 75. So here it talks about the birds. Birds in a home can increase the memory and mental powers of those humans residing there. They are lively companions ruled by Mercury. And if I remember, remember correctly, Mercury has to do with communication. Their fallen feathers can be kept and used in spells. How cool is that? And I know that uh, even in another spiritual sense, when you see feathers on the ground, that is also a sign from spirit, from angels, that everything's going to be okay. So if you, you know, you're thinking about something and you just happen to look down the ground, like, oh, there's a feather. And of course, colors mean different things too. But in this case, feather, period. <laughs> All right, cat. Watching the cat can reveal much about the future. According to ancient lore, if while lying down, a cat turns its tail towards the north or east, a storm may be headed your way. If it turns to the south or west, the weather will be calm and clear. When a cat washes her face, expect a visitor to arrive shortly. 
how cool is that? Just a little bit insight of what's to come. All right. So you may want to get a compass and learn which direction is north in your house. And sometimes not what you think. All right, cricket. I wasn't going to use cricket, but a cricket has appeared in my bedroom twice. All right. It's not as cool, cool as you think. Some people are like, oh my God, that's cool. A cricket. No, it's a little bit disturbing because you see this thing. You're like, what the heck? I'm about to go to sleep. I don't need to see things that don't belong in my room, in my room. Um, so a cricket, <laughs> it states here, a cricket can be kept in the bedroom as a watchdog. Normally, the cricket chirps all night. Since the chirping stops only when a stranger enters your home, silence will awaken the household. So I don't know if that cricket was trying to give me a heads up about something, but it is a okay. No, thank you. <laughs> For dogs, it states that the dog increases the love in any home in which it lives. I mean, that goes without saying. Let's be honest. <laughs> All right. Sacred to Diana, Hecate, Anubis, and other gods and goddesses, dogs are excellent watchers and extremely loyal to their home turf. Turf. They are sometimes called upon to spread protective energy around the home. That's lovely. Beautiful. And last, I read the turtle because I know some people have turtles as uh, pets. It has here, if you want to change your luck from bad to good, simply pat a turtle shell. <laughs> and of course, there's more there about that, but check it out. They talk about fish and iguanas. Okay, so definitely get this book. Check it out. Maybe you can rent it um, or borrow it from uh, your library. Check it out. All right. The Magical Household Spells and Rituals for the Home by Scott Cunningham and David Harrington. I thought that was pretty cool. All right. <clears throat> Let me make sure I got everything going down here. So there is a fun sheet with this episode. All right. You know, check out previous episodes. I had some amazing guests that came on the show over the years, from Denise Duffield Thomas to Clet Baron Reed, Kimmer Luna, uh, Danielle Laporte. Just amazing, amazing people. Okay, so definitely check that out. I had local uh, business owners here like Marlon McDermott has a wonderful women's community of which I'm one of the founding members, Women of Walnut. Um, so it's just like so many wonderful people have been on um, my, my show. So I am just grateful. I'm grateful for people who have shared this podcast with their friends. I'm grateful for people who have, you know, implemented action from listening to what I have to say, whether well, it's just something that has to do with, connecting with goddesses to understanding your dreams to just the simple things, which really aren't that simple sometimes like speaking your truth, like last episode. So I just want to say thank you so much. And here's to another eight years. Yay. <laughs> All right. So let's get to it. I talked about the goddess call. I did the spiritual. It's going down my list here, guys. All right. So dare to be, this is something that, I would have to say it is truly near and dear to my heart because over the years, I have been wanting to live a certain life, which involved traveling, which involved surrounding myself with people who are really just positive. And, and I don't mean like people who don't have issues. Everyone goes through, through something. I mean, people who look for the good, who want to be good, who aren't knocking people down because they you know, want to try something different who just wants to live, as some people would say, an alternative lifestyle. Like, what, what is that? What? They're, they're just living. So I have manifested that, and I've been proactive in being a person who would attract that. So a lot of self-work, a lot of things that happened, but everything was really daring. You know, I, I had to either someone dare me, but not like a I triple dog dare you, more like, Hey, Tia, won't you try contacts? You know, um, uh, people will be able to see more of your face if you were to do that. It's like, oh. Or, hey, Tia, go to the story slam with me. Tell your story. Let people hear. It's like, oh, my God. No, I'm going to fall back into nothingness because <laughs> I don't want to do it. You know, it's, it's constantly daring, right? Just putting yourself out there. But putting yourself out there in the right places. I mean, doing a, a dare just to be doing it to go viral. I mean, that's, that's equivalent to something that 
shoots stuff to start them and falls hard, right? Because it, there's just no substance to maintain it. Now, and I'm not talking about people may think, oh yeah, like a one hit wonder. No, if you capitalize on that one hit wonder, then guess what? You're doing great. For example, Sir Mix a Lot. I remember when that song came out in the nineties and it was catchy and it was like, oh my gosh. And then, you know, people still make references to that song over the years, whether it's in movies or in like TV show or just common, you know, talk. And then Nicki Minaj comes out with her song and is, and is, you know, sample, you know, based off of Sir Mix a Lot song. So there you go. That's capitalizing off of something that shot up to stardom. So yeah, one hit wonder, but look what Sir Mix Lot was able to do. And people are still using their references to this day. And it's like, what, almost 30 years later. So yeah. All right. So don't think like, oh, one hit wonder and then fizz out. No, if you capitalize on that, you're good. Think of also Vanilla Ice. You know, he had a song, Ice, Ice Baby. He was in a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. And now it just over the years of capitalizing off of what he accomplished, he has a show, my mom and I watch it, where he flipped million dollar homes in Miami. What? He's doing something that he loves and he's in Miami. I mean, he's winning. All right. So that's what I mean. I have four points here for you. And this is the last part of the series. I'm kind of sad, but here we go. One, what does it mean to be daring? How to maintain it? So in a previous episode, I asked you, what does it look like? You know, I'm asking you this, I'm prompting you because I want you to be able to define this for yourself. I don't want to be the person to say, oh, well, you should be daring by, you know, if you want to meet your man, then, you know, do A, B, C, and D, and it don't feel right to you. It's like, mm, I don't know. It's like, no, you need to be daring. You got to put yourself out there, but it doesn't fit because that's not you. And it's not something that will help you to come out your shell or just like try something new because the old things didn't work. It's not a cookie cutter, one size fit all type of thing, you know, but if I talk to you one-on-one, then I can say, oh, you know what? Yeah, you probably should, you know, wear like uh, maybe try like a little bit of brighter color because it seems like you've been, you know, a little bit, you know, it's like feeling sad and, and then your posture isn't good. And then you're wearing dark color clothes. You're just sitting out this vibe of, you know, I don't know, melancholy and sadness, you know, something like that. But I'm like, maybe try wearing red, you know, sauce it out, spice it up a bit, you know? And not like orange red. I mean, like just solid red, you know, like, oh, maybe get highlights or cut your hair, you know, sit up straight, shoulders, you know, back, you know, something like that. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit of a change and it's daring you to expose yourself and, and you know, in, in a way that's like, hey, I'm here. All right, I'm here, standing up straight, shoulders back, smile, all right, chin up, (laughs) I'm here, okay? So it's like that, all right? What does that mean? What does that mean to you? I tell you right now, for me, being daring is, uh, and I got comfortable with this, is wearing different hair colors. So I've talked about this in last week's episode. So, and then, Initially, I was, I was really nervous to wear different hair colors, but it's something that I really wanted to do for such a long time because I love being espresso. Like I, I love looking at makeup and like hair design and stuff like that. There's some crazy talented people out there. I'm like, oh my gosh, I would love to rock that hair color, that style. So finally I did it. I dared myself. I did it on the weekends. And, you know, I was just like, oh my God, are people going to think something of me? Because, you know, sometimes people see you in a different hair color and they just automatically lab- label you as, you know, someone who's uneducated or something like that. And I have heard that from people before, which is crazy. I mean, it's because someone wants to wear pink hair doesn't mean that they're stupid or they don't care about anything. They're being expressive. A hair color does not define your level of intelligence or it doesn't let people know whether or not you're going to be a jerk. I've known people who have natural hair, natural hair color, and they are incredible. And I mean that in the very bad sense, like, like they're just characters. They are just not nice people. And it, it makes me think like, are, are you serious? So don't ever feel like you have to um, look a certain way when you have the option to change it up a little bit, you know, because again, when people say stuff like, oh, only certain type of people wear their hair color, not true. Like I just said, there are people who wear natural hair, natural hair color, and they aren't, they are not a nice person at all. All right. So 
what is daring for you? Maybe that's the very thing you need to do. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe something is too daring for you and you got to work your way up. Um, I'm trying to think. So last year when I was in Costa Rica, I did one of the things I want to do for a very long time. And that was to ride an ATV. And I wanted to do that because when I was younger, I wanted to be like Eve, the rapper. She's from Philly, uh, from Germantown, if I remember correctly. And when she was with Rough Riders, she was the only woman killing it, right? I'm like, oh my God, I want to be like Eve. She's so cool. She's with the Rough Riders. They're on her four wheelers and stuff like that. And I never got around to get on a four wheeler. And so finally, I'm in Costa Rica with my best friend, and and the the uh, the resort had um had hosted us to have these ATV uh to have the ATV tour. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome! Like I'm finally gonna do it. And then as I'm riding, I hear I'm my, I'm mentally playing dun 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 <laughs> uh, something new. So, you know, so I'm just like <laughs> I like DMX in my head. I'm like, yeah. Right. Meanwhile, my best friend is having all these issues and she thought that I was going to have issues with the ATV. I'm like, no, 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 honey. I've been mentally preparing for this for my entire life. Like I visualized myself popping willies on ATV. Like I didn't pop willies that day, but I visualized myself doing this. Right. But that was so daring for me. Like I was scared initially because it's a, it's a heavy piece of machinery. You know, like when we first was getting ready to pull off, my gas wasn't working at first. I didn't realize. And I was like, oh my God, I'm scared. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to gonna fall and I was like no 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 just, just get the guy and have him come over here and tell him what's going on so he had to like do something and then the ATV was working and then I then I was off to the races I was just like yeah so now I want to do zip lining that's the new dare for me I'm like okay because at first zip lining was out of the question I don't like my feet dangling I like them to be firm somewhere I don't mind being high up I just need my feet to be on somewhere firm I need to know that I can walk off <laughs> somewhere so when we were in Mexico, me and my best friend, she did the whole zip lining thing. I was like, no. So I met a shaman and I did the, uh, the, the cultural tour while she was zip lining. But now I'm just like, man, that's the new dare for me. I, I just, I'm, I'm really leaning towards zip lining. I even told her that. I said, I want to do zip lining, you know, and I want to do like a small one to see how I like it. But once I did the ATV, man, DMX playing in the background, the Eve right there, done. So that's what I'm saying. That's what it looks like for me, right? For you, it could be getting piercings. It could be telling that guy, that woman that you like them, like, hey, can we just get coffee? You know, and I've even done that too, told a guy that I like him, which was scary. But yeah, so definitely do that. Try that dare. All right, what does that look like for you? Come up. If you're someone who needs a list, right? Think of three things. This week, I'm going to tell... Um, John and I like him. I'm going to tell uh, my best friend something I always wanted to do. And I am going to go lift that weight in the gym. You know, I never go to the weight section because I always see guys over there and doing their thing. But this week, I am going to the weight section in the gym. I want to lift those free weights, right? I like how I mentioned John because in these previous episodes, we didn't like John. John has changed his ways. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, that's just my default name. Uh, okay, so two, how to be daring. Now, before I get into that, go ahead, go to tmariejohnson.com forward slash 227 and get your fun sheet. So that's tmariejohnson.com forward slash 227 and get your fun sheet. So um, how to be daring. Now, I just gave you some examples. You know, make a little list, make a pack with yourself and do it. But really, it involves a little bit of research, right? I don't want you to do so much research where you talk yourself out of it. Like, oh, if I go ziplining, I can hurt myself. You can hurt yourself by doing nothing sometimes. It could be like a faulty chair, faulty car, you know, whatever. So what I would love to see you do, and please send me an email. Let me know how this goes, is to think about what your life would be like if you didn't dare yourself to do certain things, right? And think about how it is right now. So right now you're like, oh, I play it safe. Okay, fine. But what happens if five years go by? Okay, let's forget five years. What happens if another month goes by and you don't feel like you change? You don't feel like anything is happening in your life and you feel stuck and you really just don't know what to do. Maybe it is time to try one daring thing because one thing leads to another, but it's all good things, 
okay? And let's say something doesn't work out the way you want it to. Let's say, let's take, for example, my ATV. Let's say I want, um, you know, ATV in and it wasn't as exciting as I thought it was. It was actually really boring. I'm like, oh, we just rolled around and like a lot of dust got everywhere, which was true. Dust was everywhere. And my, my white shirt that I wore there, I can't even wear it because the dust, the, the, um, the residue is just still there. Like it bleached, nothing is really getting out. So what if it was just like, oh, it wasn't when it cracked up the beat. I didn't really like it. I ruined my good shirt. Like, I don't know. Okay, but guess what? You marked it off your list. That's an experience. You can talk about that. That's a conversational piece. Okay, someone can say, hey, look, you could, you don't have to do ATV in, on, on a dirt road like we did. You could go ATV in, you know, here, over here, or, or on a track or something like that. And it's like, oh, I never thought about that. Like, did you try a go-kart or something else? Like, oh, no, I never thought about that. So it's okay. And talk about it. You know, you, you can find, you, know, you could come across someone else and you can get them that information. It might be their first time ATV and they might say, I don't mind dirt roads or thanks for the heads up. I'll wear a, a shirt I don't care about, you know, and, and like jeans I don't care about, something like that. All right. So don't think of it as, you know, something negative, like, oh, you know, what if it doesn't work out? So what? So what? Okay. Um, and even if you think, oh, I'm going to get hurt. I did paintballing. All right. And I, I got, uh, so the last round of paintballing was free for all. And I didn't really care if I got shot and my left leg got lit up and it was bruised. <laughs> so, I mean, like, yeah, okay. I got hurt, but I mean, all right. A bruise will heal, right? It's paintball. It's, it's kind of like you can expect some things to happen. All right. <clears throat> Next. How to respond to people who will try to install fear and caution. That's why I talked about the paintball experience all right so yeah i could easily have been like okay you know i'll never do paintball again because it hurts all right now some people they don't heal as fast from bruises all right some people they they, they, they can't take it okay fine i'll say okay that's okay it's not for you totally get it all right but what i do is i give people a heads up that's different than instilling fear and caution one of my friends went paintballing with his friend. I said, oh, you know, you may want to wear um, two pairs of pants. I like, or not, I like, but I said, you may want to wear two pairs of pants because when those little bullets, and it was just, um, what did the guy say it was? Like food coloring, little like veg- vegetation, something, vegetable bullets. So it wasn't really like paint dye. It was, it was like some organic um paint but you know because it propels out it hurts so i just said you know you, you may want to wear two pairs of pants it does hurt i said keep your mouth closed you know when <laughs> you don't want that in your mouth you know depending on the mask that you get and uh <clears throat> i just gave him a heads up but i didn't say oh no you don't want to go paintballing because you know if, if you get those paintballs to your leg or your arm or anything like that it really hurts dude like you're going to be down for days it's an exaggeration down for days Okay, you can say it's going to take a little while to heal. Yeah, it's a bruise. So what do you say to people like that? What I say is, you know, I heal fast. I I don't mind it. I know that's part of the ter- territory that is possible. I don't plan on getting hit that much. Like I said, you know, I didn't really care because we just had bullets and, you know, whatever. We weren't playing a, a game. Um, you just got to just let people know, like, hey, it's okay. Sometimes people just care. But sometimes people are just naturally natural at uh, exaggerating, okay? So you can say, I don't think that's what's going to happen. Uh, I did a little bit of research, and they, they say that that's not likely or that doesn't happen often. I think I'll be okay. And most times you are okay, right? So just keep that in mind. Just have that little conversation. That's what I've been seeing throughout this series. Have these conversations, Okay too many times people don't want to have a conversation that goes right to arguments. It doesn't have to be that way. Explain them. I did my research and I doubt that's going to happen. Or my friend did this. Sherry told me about it. Sometimes people make those statements. They, they haven't even done it. <laughs> you know, something that they saw on TV or read somewhere, a little clip from an article. They don't even know. Or something they did 10 years ago and, you know, the rules changed. So ask them, well, when is the last time you went in Ziplining? When's the last time you did paintballing? Oh, yeah, I, I did that eight years ago. We went here. That's, that's irrelevant. Eight years ago? No, no, mm-mm, no. <laughs> Doesn't count anymore. So say things like that. 
All right. And last but not least, uh, it's about the lesson learned over time, not just a dare, right? Every time I do something that is a little bit of a dare and it feels exhilarating and a little bit scary and I don't know, I feel so empowered after. I feel like I could do even more next time. And I feel like, hey, if I can do this, then I can definitely do that, which could be something like speaking my truth, which could be uh, telling someone no, which could be me saying yes to myself. So many things happen when the dare becomes our truth, all right? When we look at the lesson learned, when we go back and laugh and go like, I can't believe I did that, but that was so exhilarating, oh my gosh. So look at everything and happening up to it. How did you feel before the dare? How did you feel during the dare? How did you feel after the dare? All right, and what would you tell people about it? Hey, look, create a vlog, write about it, you know, something, do an Instagram story about it, okay? You can be the inspiration for someone else. So that's what I want to just drill in here. Dare to be, dare to be. This is for you. This is so you can make the most out of your life. This is so you can keep intact who you are because throughout life, we put on so many titles, right? Mother, sister, wife, um, aunt, worker, whoever worker is, supervisor, coworker, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. I mean, we are Google to some people. We set up appointments for some people. We are everything, okay? But sometimes we forget to be just us. All right. And part of this is helping you to keep in tech that God is within. All right. So she's not spread so thin that she forgets the very reason why she wants to do the thing she wants to do and forgets who she is. All right. This three part series is to help you reclaim the bits of yourself that have been given out and not even realizing it because you are working towards helping others because you want to see things to the end because that's you that's your reputation that's who you are you're generous you're kind you you complete things you connect people but what about you what about reclaiming the essence of you what about in that process exploring what makes you happy exploring depths of you that you didn't realize existed unlocking your gifts you know, just being present and being you and showing up as you. Forget about showing up as everything else because yes, you are those amazing, wonderful things. But what about showing up as you and people understand that everything else is a part of you. You are not just a part of everything else. No, it starts with you and it ends with you. Okay. So that's what I wanted to do with this series. Feel free to come back and listen to this series at any time of the year, okay, this is here for you. Make sure that you print out those fun sheets, multiple pages, share it with your girlfriends, get together, have a circle, talk about it, okay? Even if you do this once a month to say, hey, look, are we speaking our truth? Did we fall off the wagon? It's okay, because guess what? You could get back on the wagon, all right? So make sure that you download the fun sheet, tmariejohnson.com forward slash 227. Um, set up the goddess call because I would love to speak with you. All right. And I will see you next episode. So next episode is Confessions of Tia. I don't know what I'm going to confess, but we'll see. Don't forget to fill out that survey so I can give you more amazing content that you want to hear. All right. So I am sending you so many blessings. Have a wonderful day and don't forget to be kind to yourself. Thank you for joining Spiritual Living and Empowerment with Tia Johnson. Don't forget to subscribe and tune in to the next show. Want to continue the conversation with Tia? Follow her on Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope at Tia underscore Johnson underscore. Have a wonderful day filled with many blessings.